God's plan often requires us to be extended beyond our current state. Whilst we may be feeling like nothing's ever going to change, ever going to grow, God is getting ready to expand us, to stretch us out. It's not always comfortable. We feel the tension, the desire to return to our original state. But we're being fitted for something bigger, something more. We may feel some pressure, but in the end, we'll find it's because we've grown to embrace something we could never have imagined or asked for. A heritage in God. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for a bigger future? Hi there friends and family. It is amazing that you and I get to spend some time together in God's Word. I know that these moments are key moments for our growth, key moments for us to experience God. And if you can get to an in-person celebration, I want to encourage you to do so. Being in person is just so much better than online, but this is a close second. And so I'm glad that we, we could just be able to just open our hearts and say, Holy Spirit, come and speak to us. If you'd like to give financially, you can also do so now, but let's open our hearts. Let's pray. Let's position ourselves to receive from God in Jesus' name. Father, I want to thank you for the privilege that we have to be able to trust you together, to stand together, to open our hearts. Lord, I thank you that even though I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, I could still be able to share a word that is in season with friends of mine and family that's in different parts of the world. God, we open our hearts. We are ready to receive from you. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. God is wanting to speak to us right now. And we are right now nearing the end of our amazing series called Stretched Out. As you know, we've gone through Isaiah 50, parts of Isaiah 52, 53, 54, and today we're gonna to be looking at the first part of Isaiah 55, and then next week, the last part of Isaiah 55. And we've been on this amazing journey, realizing that we can't stretch out, we can't stretch out in our own strength. We can't stretch out in order to embrace the promises of God if we do not understand that He first stretched out for us. And for us, stretching is part of embracing the promises of God. And what we do in this stretching is not something that, that, that comes out of ourselves. We stretch in response to God's stretching. And this stretching is not empowered by man. Flesh gives birth to flesh, the Bible said, but spirit gives birth to to spirit. So the only way you and I can embrace the promises of God and the power of God is to be empowered by God to do what God has called us to do. And one of the biggest mistakes you and I can make is that we could attempt to do God's work with man's strength. We can attempt to, we, we, can, we can actually try to fulfill God's purpose and God's calling upon our lives in our own strength with our own power. And so today I'm going to look at a few verses, just a few verses from Isaiah 55. And I believe this is going to unlock something of the truth of God's word that you and I can understand. How can you and I be empowered by God? How can we access the power of God to stretch um, beyond what we know, to stretch out uh, for his glory? How can you and I bring glory to God with our lives? Many people say to me, Mark, I know that man's chief end, according to the Westminster Catechism, is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. I know that, that it's all about the glory of God, that Jesus Christ was crucified primarily for the glory of God and so that he could save all of mankind. But we do know that for us to live for God's glory, the Bible actually says that we need to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. Actually, the, the Bible is so, so clear that God's called us for glory. He's called us to take us from one degree of glory to the next, that we can behold His glory and that we can bring glory to Him. Jo Jesus says in John 17, he says, he says, glorify me so that I can bring glory to you. It's actually all about the glory of God. It's all about you and I experiencing God's glory, reflecting His glory and enjoying His glory. And so today we're going to look at a few verses. How can you and I be empowered, how can we be stretched to
to bring God, God's, God's glory. Let's look at verse 1 of Isaiah 55. And this is the key for me, friends, of living in the glory of God, reflecting the glory of God, experiencing His glory, and then being stretched for His glory and for His fame. It says, come all who are thirsty, verse 1, come to the waters. I love this, the, 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 the language that the prophet uses. He says, and you have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. I love the choice of words here. Just in one verse, we can possibly preach a whole series just on this verse. Come to Jesus. So here's the thing, friends, is Jesus, he's done everything for us, but we need to come. So you need to understand that you need to come. If you've not, if you've not humbled yourself and said, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of myself. Lord, I need you. If you're not going to get to that place, you're going to struggle to experience the power of God. You're going to struggle to live for the glory of God. He says, if you are thirsty, come. Come to the waters. If you are thirsty. Now, I'd love to unpack that. If you are thirsty. It says in John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. Now, Jesus is prophesying about himself on the great day of the feast because he's the Lord of the feast. And he says, he says, on the great day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. If you've got any thirst in your life, friends, here's the thing. It's proven that people can go without food for way longer than what they can go without water. Water, a large part of our bodies is made out of water. Without water, we cannot survive. Without drinking, you and I cannot live. And it's amazing how Jesus says, if you're thirsty, if you're dry, come to me. It's amazing. For me, it just reminds me of Jesus' words in Matthew 11 when he says, if you are burdened and heavy laden, come to me. Take my yoke upon you Take, because my, burden, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says in verse 38, he says, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Watch this. Jesus is saying that he's not only called us to drink, He's also called us to become a fountain. He's not only called us to be on the receiving end, He's also called us to be on the overflowing end so that others can drink, so that others can drink from Him, that He can become within us a well that never runs dry. He says in verse 39, it says here, by this He meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in Him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Amazing how the prophet Isaiah, does, he's prophesying ahead and he's speaking about Jesus Christ and he's saying, you can come to Jesus. If you are thirsty, you can come to him. And when you drink from him, he's speaking about his spirit. You can be satisfied with the presence of God, the presence of God's spirit in your life. And you can overflow with the joy and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now you might, you might be saying, but Mark, this is just amazing. It's amazing but how do I take hold of this? Because I don't have the goods. I don't have the money. He says, you who have no money, you who have the, don't have the resources, you, who, you, you might not have the education, you might not have the experience, you might not have the, the right upbringing, you might, not, you might not live in the right neighborhood. <laughs> He's saying, he says, even if you don't have the ability, even if you don't have the resources, he's saying, you can come and buy without money. You can buy without money. Friends, you know, it's time that we start operating with the currency of faith and not the currency of the earth. It's time that we start operating not with our, our, our family name and not with our prestige and not with our status and not with our, our qualifications and not with our bank balances and not with our credit score. But it's time that we start operating with faith. And, and faith, the Bible is actually clear, it comes from this word. It's like this, this word is like no money, but we have buying power. I'll never forget this. We just got to Charlotte, North Carolina. And, um, and because we're visiting, because we're visit visitors, we were blessed with a voucher. I was blessed with a voucher. And this voucher was a $50 voucher to go to Giddy Goat, which was now one of my favorite uh, coffee shops. It's a coffee shop that actually, they, 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 make, they roast their own coffee. They make amazing coffee. They've got some wonderful pastries. And it's just a few blocks from the church building so I often see people at this coffee shop but because I got a voucher I walked into this coffee shop with no money but I walked in with a voucher I walked in with a card I walked in with something that was just as good as money I was able I got buying power 
without money. God gave us a voucher, and that voucher is found in these scriptures. That voucher is found in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That voucher is find, found when we put our faith and our trust in Him. And friends, here's the thing. It's like Jesus won the victory. He, he fought the battle, and you and I get to enjoy the spoils. That's why we are not only conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Because Jesus fought the battle on the cross, and you and I get to enjoy the benefits. Jesus paid the price. He paid with his money, and you and I have a voucher that we can spend. We can spend for our joy, for our peace, for our deliverance, for our salvation, for, for our freedom of fear. In order to be able to, to, to take hold of the promises of God, we, without money, can partake in the promises, the blessing, the favor, the goodness of God. Isn't that good news? But friends, he says here, what do we buy? What do we buy with this voucher? What do we buy with this voucher called faith? this voucher of, of trusting God's word and putting God's word in our hearts. What do we buy with this, with this kind of redeemable voucher? Listen, friends, he says, you can buy wine and you can buy milk. He says, without money, with, without cost. Friends, you can partake. What's the wine? The wine is the blood of Jesus Christ, the redemption that Jesus came, that brought, brought us, the freedom from guilt and shame that Jesus brought us. We can partake in salvation, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The wine is at the center. He took the cup on the last night before he was, on which he was betrayed, and he said, this is my blood, the cup that was poured out for many. This is my, my wine, the wine of Jesus Christ, the life of God. This wine is also synonymous to the Holy Spirit. He's saying the life of God. And he says, milk, you can take, partake of the milk. Paul writes, he says, we, the, 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 the word of God is like milk. We, we partake in the milk. This nourishes our souls. Jesus Christ gave the wine and he is the word. And you and I can partake in this life-giving reality, not with our, what we've purchased, but with what he purchased for us on the cross. Not our performance, but his performance. Verse two, <laughs> there's so much in here. He says, why spend money on what is not bread? Oh, there's the body of Christ, the life of God, the bread of, of, the bread of Christ, the, the, the bread of life, Jesus Christ. He says, and your labor on what does not satisfy. John Piper says this, he says, God is most glorified in me when I'm most satisfied in him. See, friends, God wants us to be satisfied with him, not in other things. Now watch this, the key to embracing the largeness, the bigness of God, the key, listen to this. He says, listen, then he says it again, listen to me. Now this is a prophetic word, so that means it's God's word in the prophet's mouth being recorded. And so God is saying to you today, the key to you and me embracing what we cannot afford, what we cannot pay for in ourselves, the key to you and me embracing the glory of God, living a life in the glory of God. You say, how do I glorify God with, with my life? Here's the key. Listen, listen to him. Jesus just says, he says, if you hear his words, put them into practice, you build your life on the rock. We touched on that last week. Listen, incline your ear. Let him who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Listen to me. And watch this. When you listen to him, and that's listen, listen. So listen, physical and spiritual. Listen, listen to him. And eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest of fare. Watch this. Listen to him. Listen to him. And you get a feast at his table. You're going to delight at what he's got for you. Friends, often what happens to believers is they start in the Spirit and then they end up in the flesh. Why would you go for what it does not satisfy? Why would you spend your life and your energy and what God has done for you, why would you spend it on what does not satisfy? Galatians chapter three, Paul writes to the church in Galatia and he says to them, what is, what's gone on with you guys? You started in the spirit and now you're back in the flesh. You're trying to earn God's favor with works of the flesh. No, listen to him and you'll be able to taste and see that God is good. You're going to be able to delight in His goodness. You're going to be able to experience His goodness. Uh, it's amazing just for me how, 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 how God wants you and me to experience Him, to know Him experientially, not to know Him just factually, but to know Him experientially. That makes all the difference, friends. Then He says in verse 3, He says, Give ear to me. I love this. The line of listening and come to me. That's what God wants us to do. You want to live a life for His glory? You want to allow God to stretch you beyond yourself and, and, and into greater fruitfulness and greater glory? Listen and come. 
hear him and come to him. Listen that you may live. See, friends, life is released when we hear God's, God's word. That's why I believe we need to engage with the word of God every single day. That's why we should say, Lord, we're going to trust you. We're going to hear you because as I hear you, I grow in you. And as I grow in you, I'm able to be stretched by you. And as I'm stretched by you, I bring glory to your name. He says, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, an everlasting promise an everlasting promise with you. He says, my faithful love promised to David. So just like I promised to your forefathers, God is saying, I will bring that about to you. This is all linked to the greatest promise of all, all time, Jesus Christ. And then the outpouring of his spirit, which was the promise of the father. Faith comes, friends, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we hear him, faith rises and then we can live because the Bible says that the just shall live by his faith. We now live by the faith of the Son of God in our lives. Friends, what you and I need to do is we need to incline our ear. The Bible says you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way you should go. You should walk in it. The Spirit of God speaks to us. He guides us. Friends, it's amazing how you and I have the privilege. We've got access to the Spirit of God leading us, guiding us. Would you wake up in the morning? I'm challenging myself right now saying, God, I want to live for your glory. That means I want to be sensitive to you. That means I want to listen to you, Holy Spirit. And sometimes it might just be a nudging that says, take this road rather than that road. Sometimes it might be phone this person, send that person a voice, voice note. Sometimes it might be, actually, I just need to go to this store and not to that store. And then right there, God connects you. I've been speaking to people. Sometimes the Holy Spirit presses on their heart. Rather, just quickly go around the house. And when they go around the house, they find someone there that God wants to touch. The Bible says that my sheep hear my voice and they follow. That's John 10. So what you and I need to do is we are God's, the sheep of his pasture, and God wants us to hear his voice and follow his leading. This is how we engage with God's promises. We hear him. We, friends, like Tyron and Daniel keeps on saying, people say, surely you don't still do the hearing God thing. Tyron's like, yes, we do the hearing God thing. I want to hear his voice and I want to do what he says. I want to hear his voice and I want to do what he say, says. The, the, the reason why Peter could walk on water was not because he was amazing, not because he was perfect, because he was far from perfect. Even after walking on water, we saw this was by no means a perfect person. He often said things he shouldn't have said, thought things he shouldn't have thought, done things. He even chopped someone's ear off. Peter was not perfect. And if you're waiting to be perfect, to bring glory to God in your life, you're going to wait forever. If you're waiting to be perfect for God to stretch you beyond your, 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 your temporary life and into an eternal fruitfulness, you're going to wait forever. You're going you're gonna to have to say, Lord, even in my imperfection, I want to walk on water with you. And the way that we walk on water, the way that we step out of the boat, out of our comfort zone, is by hearing the words of Jesus. Peter said this. He said to Jesus, only say the word. Say, tell me to come, and I'll come. And Jesus said to him, come. And as Jesus said to him, come. Just like Jesus is saying to you today, come to the waters. Just like Jesus is saying, come to me, you are burdened and heavy laden. Jesus is saying, come. I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what storm you're facing. I don't know what area, and you might, might be feeling a little bit of fear. And you're saying, but I can't step out of the boat. It's just scary. No one else is doing this. No one else in my family is broken out of this cycle of pain. No one else is broken out of this addiction, this pornography addiction, or maybe this substance abuse. No one else is broken out. How am I going to do this? I'm here to say to you, friends, you need to hear Jesus say, come. And Jesus, I want to pray right now with my, for my friends and my family watching that, that, they, will, that they will hear you say, come. That they'll, that they'll go to your word. And that they'll hear you speak to them and that they'll walk on your word, responding to your word. Verse 4 says, See, I've made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander to the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you do not know. Friends, God is wanting to enlarge your fruitfulness. But this comes from Jesus being the witness and you and me witnessing to the greatest one. His name is Jesus Christ, the ruler, the commander of all peoples, you and me witnessing to him. And actually, then Jesus says, you will become my witnesses. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll receive my, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Friends, 
our lives can not only be about our little neighborhood and about the school that our kids attend and the, and the university that I study at and the money that I make and the next new car that I buy. Friends, oh friends, I'm, I'm pleading with you by the grace of Jesus Christ. Can your life be bigger than you? Can your life be bigger than just the person you're marrying? Can your life be bigger than just the, 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 the next promotion at work? Can your life be bigger than that? How about your life touching not only your region, your city, but how about your life touching the nations of the world? Nations that you do not know, people groups, people in the, in the 1040 window. How about your life touching those areas because of the Lord your God, because of the Holy One of Israel, because He's endowed you with splendor. Friends, Adam and Eve, when they were in the garden, I believe when they sinned, they lost the glory of God. That's why they could see they were naked. Because before that, I believe the glory of God clothed them. They were clothed in righteousness. They were clothed in splendor. But when they sinned, I believe they lost the splendor. They lost the glory. But now that you and I are putting our faith in Jesus Christ, the last Adam, the one that was crucified, the one that glorified the Father, the one that overcame death so that he can bring about freedom and glory to you. Now he wants to endow us with glory and with honor. He wants to crown us with glory and honor, not for our sake, but for his glory and for his honor. And so we no longer have to be naked or ashamed. We no longer have to feel like we're worthless, but we can be worthy in him. We no longer have to feel like we've got purposeless, but we can have purpose in him. We no longer have to say, no, we are not approved. No, we are approved in him. We no longer say, but we're not chosen. We rejected. No, we're chosen in him. And we clothed with his robe of righteousness, with a robe of glory, and we can bring him glory. If you're far from God today, I know that your sin and your shame might be getting the better of you. You might be saying, but Mark, I'm separated from God. I feel guilty. I feel condemned. Today is your day of salvation. Today is the day, like the father did, he put a new robe on the son. God wants to come and clothe you. He wants to put a robe of splendor, a robe of his grace and his glory, his righteousness upon you. But if you're close to God, friends, could you and I just stretch out our hands and say, God, I want to bring glory to you with my life. I want to be stretched for your glory. Lord, in increase my vision of you and increase my faith in you, God. May I experience this, your spirit, your living water. May I experience your wine, Jesus, the liberty, the freedom, the, the, the forgiveness that your, your blood brought. Jesus, may I partake, may I feast at your table in the mighty name of Jesus. Friends, I want to encourage you right now. Would you just put some worship on? Would you just respond to God and experience His glory in your life? And then may that glory overflow that others may experience the glory of God through you in Jesus' name.